What's up Thrashers and welcome back once again to the Thrash Maniac 99 YouTube channel and yeah a little bit of a different setup that's because I moved places around the house and now I have a separate office now for both my computer and my drums so maybe some drum videos will be coming in the future eh, maybe not we'll see though but uh yeah and i apologize for the echoey everything i'm still not got everything just right around here uh, eventually i'm gonna try and get some like foam pads or like foam things up onto the walls to kind of cancel out the echo but anyways with all that said let's get on to the video so i am back for yet another album review for you guys and this one was an interesting one that I wanted to talk about, considering I had been listening to an album that this man did back in 1989, quite a bit as of late. I am here to talk about the brand new solo album from former Black Sabbath and Candlemass vocalist at one point, Tony Martin. Now, of course, Tony Martin, yeah, he's most known for being on five Black Sabbath albums. Eternal Idol, Headless Cross, Tear, uh, Cross Purposes, and Forbidden. So, yeah, unfortunately he's known as being the vocalist on the worst Sabbath album, but is the vocalist on a couple of underrated Sabbath albums, particularly Headless Cross and Tear, to be exact. And the best way to kind of describe Tony Martin's vocals, for those who are unaware, he sounds like a mixture of Glenn Hughes and Ronnie James Dio. More Dio than Glenn Hughes, because he kind of has that more epic storytelling vibe to his vocals. But I'm here to talk about his third solo album, Thorns. So yeah, Thorns came out just a couple of days ago, and this is his first solo album in 17 years since Scream in 2005. And this is only the third one, the only the third solo album that Tony Martin has done. And here we are, so let's talk about it. So we kick things off with As the World Burns. Starting off with some tremolo riffing going on in the background while the main guitars and drums kind of build the song up at the start. And then afterwards it gets into some speed metal riffs and beats before it settles into a mid-tempo groove while Tony's voice comes in through the cut of the mix. And already I can hear right off the bat that his voice has aged very, very well over the years. He still sounds very similar to how he did in his days in Black Sabbath. Towards the middle of the song, the riffs really start to chug along, leading to a big scream and Tony delivering some dark overtones in his vocals towards the end of the track which then leads us into black widow angel and right off the bat we get a heavy doomy riff that immediately echoes black sabbath thick and chunky the riff is by the way and the song then transitions into some groove during the verse but then the chorus it's like you get groovy verses and doomy choruses on this track and then even a funky bass line comes in and it was one of the best highlights of the entire album for me was this funky bass line you hear in the middle of the track while the drums go into double bass and then the riff follows along towards the end of the song book of shadows follows afterwards with now this song is really interesting because it's mostly driven by dark choirs, drums, bass, acoustic guitars, and Tony. And it's really the dark choir chants and the drums building the tension up in the beginning of the song, followed by the bass and Tony's voice, and then the acoustics come in. So I really like how this song started off. And as the acoustic guitars come along, everything else continues to sound epic. And like I said, this track is mostly driven by those elements, the choir, the bass, the drums, Tony's voice, and the acoustics. However, towards the end, the electric guitar comes in and delivers some more heavy riffing with a keyboard solo. And while that keyboard solo was great, I honestly wish that could have been a guitar solo. 
And then you get some female spoken word towards the end to kind of continue on this like epic story that the song is kind of telling you. Crying Wolf comes up next and we get some beautiful acoustic guitars that kind of echoes Opeth in my mind, followed by Tony's voice coming along. This track is the most prog, progressive oriented song. This is like a prog metal song, though it's mostly acoustic based. But Tony's voice soars a couple of times on this track. And then we get our first electric guitar solo, and it sounded incredible. It sounded like something you would have heard from really any rock band of the 70s, and it was well executed. Then we get a second solo. It was quick, but it was still quite memorable following the chorus. So yeah, Crying Wolf, the most proggy song of the album, no doubt about it. Damned by you, we get back to more of those doom moments, though more of those doomy riffs. And I like how along with the doom riffs, you hear a saxophone come along, which added a little bit of a jazz feel to the doominess, which I thought was really cool. But the track all throughout remains really doomy. And it kind of, it sounds like it sits right in between, like, Headless Cross and Dehumanizer for Black Sabbath. <clears throat> like, in between those two albums is what I think, like, this song kind of sounds like. Wacky drum fills you hear a couple of times. Another awesome guitar solo towards the end, and it sounds more like a Dimebag Daryl solo. Then again, the guitar player of this album actually plays in a Pantera tribute band, so you can kind of hear a little bit of that. Not just on this song, but going forward, you're going to hear a lot of those elements going on. No Shame at All comes up next, and it's definitely more groove-oriented for sure, and it kind of has a bit of a modern Judas Priest feel to it. The riffs on this song do stand out like a sore thumb, and while those were great, I honestly feel like there could have been more variety in this song as opposed to just pummeling groove the whole time. I wish there could have been a little bit more melody. A solo would have been nice. But that's just my opinion. Nowhere to Fly comes up next, and we get some clean guitars, kind of setting a bit of a murky f mood to begin here. Then it gets Doomy once again, and really heavy Doomy riffs right here. The verses are quite dark with the clean guitars, but the chorus remains very heavy and very Doomy. One of the darker songs of the album by far. Uh, Passion Killer, after a fast drum intro, we get into more of those grooves, although the bass really stands out on this track, and I love how it trades off with the riffs, too, and it's quite something to be had on this track. Even Tony's voice gets a little bit gritty on a couple of parts during this song, and even has a little bit of a soaring moment towards the end. Run Like the Devil, things speed up a little bit here, and this is mostly a speed metal track, but the chorus is quite groovy, so it's like a speed metal verse and a groovy chorus, but then we get to another great guitar solo, and this time it has a bit more of a power metal vibe, because it has a little more melody going on and a little bit more, almost like a Dungeons and Dragons feel to it as well. This Is Your Damnation, definitely an interesting song. It's pretty much like, this is like a Western song. Like, it's all acoustic and bass and drum oriented. And lyrically, it kind of describes, like, the evil of the world and how they're destined for damnation. But it sounds like it's being portrayed in the Old West at the OK Corral kind of feeling. It's kind of odd, so kind of mixed results for me on that. But then we get to the title track, Thorns, the final track of the album, starting off with some somber yet dramatic acoustic guitars, beautiful acoustic solo following with the bass and drums leading to Tony coming in, showcasing more sorrow in his voice. The electric guitars come in and immediately makes an impact. Even Tony's hitting some long notes during the choruses, which carries on a little bit of emotion in the chorus and then towards the end we get a guest appearance from Pamela Moore who's mostly known for doing the female vocals on Queensryche's classic album Operation Mindcrime 
And she does well at matching the power of Tony's voice. So overall, this album has a lot of different elements going on. You got some doominess, you got some groove, you got some speed, you've got some western, some prog, some jazz. It's kind of all over the place in terms of the songwriting and what Tony and the rest of the guys were really kind of going for in the songwriting department. And while a lot of these songs were great, there were a few that I felt like they had some missed opportunities, especially the biggest complaint that I really have about this album was there was only a few guitar solos. I feel like all these songs should have had a guitar solo attached, and I think it would have helped serve the songs a little bit better, and I think it would have made those songs feel much more strong, much stronger in my opinion. But alas, not that many solos, but there were some uh, some awesome riffs all throughout this album. I just feel like in terms of like the feel of the album and the way it was kind of flowing, it just kind of, in the songwriting department, it just felt like they kind of just threw a bunch of spaghetti onto the wall and just waited to see what would stick. And I would say about 75% of it stuck and 25% of it fell off the wall for me. But again, it's just one man's opinion. That's really all it is. But not a bad song on this album. It's just I feel like there were moments on a couple of those weaker tracks I felt were like missed opportunities. Like in No Shame at All, while you had some great riffs, didn't really have a lot of songwriting variety going on in there. And then like the keyboard solo in uh, Book of Shadows, while fantastic, just imagine if it was a guitar solo. It could have been something special right there but alas it's what we ended up with but overall solid album despite the inconsistencies in the songwriting department i enjoyed this album for the most part and for that i'm gonna give this one an eight out of ten i definitely look at this album as like tony martin's like kind of trying to uh send a message to tony iomi like hey tony i would like to do a solo album with you one day and it's rumored Iomi is going to do another solo album, and maybe after hearing Tony Martin's voice still sounding great, maybe we'll hear Iomi and Martin get together for a solo album and it might kick ass. We just have to wait and see on that. But anyways, what did you guys think of Thorns by Tony Martin? Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are, and until next video, horns high, and I will see you soon. I've noticed yeah. that once people hit Slayer, they're like, is there something more extreme than Slayer? Yeah, it, it, it's the crossroad, you know, either you're going, yes. like, okay, hey, this is too much, or you're like, I need more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so uh, I found Cannibal Corpse on YouTube when I was 12 or 13, and heard the Hammer Smash the face bass solo. Uh, well, of course. Of course, already then I was uh, a bass player, so, but when I heard that, I was like, okay, that's what I'm gonna do. This is it. <laughs> and then it just spiraled downwards from there. And it just keeps growing and growing and growing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it never stops. Yeah. It devours you. Yeah, because, yeah. uh,